To date, we've dealt with regression models that have uh, scalar outputs only. And uh, in, in practice, when we go out into the real world, uh, we're often doing regression uh, where, where, we, where our outputs actually are entire vectors. So we'd like to be able to handle this type of a situation. This is what's referred to as multi-regression. Uh, for the linear models that we build for multi-regression, the parameters are actually independent uh, across the different outputs. So changing a parameter for one output uh, doesn't affect uh, the, the other outputs. This is not true in the general case, uh, but it is uh, true for the models we've been studying so far. The error metric is also a simpler, simple generalization. Um, one choice we can make is just to sum the individual errors for the output vector. And, and we'll do that math here in just a moment. Okay, so, so what we have done so far is we've thought of a training set for our supervised learning problem as being uh, pairs of uh, vectors. So x0 here is a vector and y0 is a scalar. But we can, we can formulate this uh, differently. We can now think of those y's as uh, vectors in and of themselves. So let me go ahead and change the casing on that. So now we'll have a y0, y1, y2, and uh, ym minus one here. And what we mean by a, a particular uh, y1 is that or let's just call it an ij. This is a column vector that's composed of uh, the different channels for this particular sample. So, uh, so we have lowercase y j0, yj1, and on down the line to uh, y j m minus 1. So before we, we had this top element only, and now we have a whole set of them. So our linear model formulation uh, generalizes as well. So I have some sort of a y, j prediction that I'm making, and that's going to be equal to w uh, transpose uh, xj. And, and what we mean by this is that uh, yj zero hat is equal to uh, the summation of the, the w's. And this is going, now the w becomes a little bit more complicated. It's not just, it's not just over i's, but there is now a component, an index for uh, which output channel we're referring to times uh, the xi um, xji. So, so this is the, the scalar component that, that corresponds to this first element here. And yj1 is a summation of from 0 to n wi1 xj uh, i and, and on down the line until we get down to the, the bottom element here. So hopefully it's becoming clear that this vector matrix notation uh, is actually uh, quite convenient for uh, expressing uh, all of the stuff here on the right-hand side. It's a nice compact representation of this. So this, this W transpose, this piece right here, uh, before W transpose was a row vector, and now it's, it's a full matrix. And let me say what's inside of this matrix here to actually make this all work out. This first element right here, this is our W00 component. 
and that corresponds to the first element of this sum. And then the next element is w10, the next element is w20, etc. There's an implicit comma uh, in there as well. And the very last element here is wn0. So, so this is exactly what we had before, except now we have this extra uh, second index of 0. The next row is 0, 1, w11, w21, etc., wn1. And this continues for all of our k. So down to w0, k minus 1, w1, k minus 1, and on to wn, k minus 1. And, and again, there are implicit commas hiding down in there. So for those of you who have who have worked with linear algebra, uh, if you uh, take this w transpose and multiply it by a column vector, one of these xj's, you're going to end up with exactly uh, a, a big yj, uh, actually it's a big yj hat, that has, uh, it is a column vector and has a total of k elements in, in the vector. And I'll leave that uh, as an exercise for you. Okay, so let's, let's talk about uh, the error metric. So mean squared error, now we have not just the different uh, samples in our data set, but we also have the individual elements of the output vector. So, so this means that we're dealing with a double sum. And, and this can be formulated in a variety of ways. Here's one way of doing it. We're going to sum over uh, all of the samples. And then we're going to uh, sum over all the elements of the uh, of the output uh, vector. And here I'm, I have a, a lowercase k and an uppercase k. I apologize for that. There's the lowercase. So that's my index variable. It's common for us to use lowercase for uh, index variables and uppercase variables for uh, for constants. And then what we have inside of here is the y, j, k, and the estimated y, j, k uh, squared. So in, in, you can think of this as being the superset of the mean squared error that we looked at before. Uh, the, the original uh, formulation, k was just simply 1. And, and so uh, this element here uh, drops out, since it's just a divisor of 1, and this sum becomes uh, a sum of one item. So, so it reduces down to what we had before. Likewise, we can also, uh, we, we can also ha uh, formulate our own uh, uh, mean absolute error. And, and that takes the same same form here, except uh, we have an absolute value instead of a square. And for those who are, I, and for those who who are following the linear algebra side of things, we can also define the mean squared error in this way. Still have to sum over the all of the samples. But we can we can talk about the vectors themselves and, and take a vector difference. So the y j's are uh, column vectors, okay. so so 
so this is uh, uh, th this is a column vector, this is a column vector, and then when we take the transpose, it becomes a row vector. So when we multiply these two things together, uh, we end up with a sum of the squared uh, differences, just as we have in, in this part of the sum and the equation above. Okay. One last point I'd like to make. Um, with this particular definition of our error metric, uh, we were treating all of the outputs as being equally important, me meaning an, an error of some magnitude along uh, element uh, zero of the output vector is equivalent to an error in the k minus one uh, element. And, and that's that's usually okay, but if these elements are, say, of different units, then we might want to introduce a weighting factor that uh, expresses the relationship between them. One, one way we could express this weighting factor is we could introduce, uh, say, let's call that a beta k right in here. So this, so beta k is in the range of could be zero if you wanted certain outputs to not be important, uh, but it's in, in the range of zero to one. And it expresses the, the importance of the kth element uh, of your output vector. So if, if beta k is one and all of them are one, then you're treating them equally uh, as equal importance. If one of them is half, then you're treating it as half as important as, as one that is set to one. Okay, so that's that's the general idea behind multi-regression. And what's really nice is that our scikit-learn tools handle multi-regression right out of the box. So let's do a quick example of that. <coughs> 